Can someone please tell me how it is already June? Because I have no idea how that happened. Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name's Jackie and I'm an aspiring fiction writer. And at the end of 2019, I did a video on my goals for 2020. And since we're approaching the middle of 2020 now, I thought it would be interesting to look back at what those goals were and how close I am to achieving them or whether I'm halfway to achieving them given that we're halfway through the year. The short answer is no, but <laughs> let's get into a bit more detail. So I grouped my goals into a few different categories. The first one and the most relevant one for this channel is obviously writing related goals. I had a number of writing goals for 2020. The first one was related to my NaNoWriMo draft from last year, Powerless, and the goals were one, to revise it, two, to work with an editor, and then the stretch goal was if the work with an editor went well, maybe put it out for submission. But that one is really pie in the sky type of dream. I'm not going to be too worried if I miss that because I'm very aware that there could be significant feedback from the editing process and that could mean lots and lots of revisions that take time. When it comes to new drafts, I wanted to do two new drafts this year and had a stretch goal of three. Now at the end of 2019, because I was almost done with Powerless, I thought three was probably doable. I could have one new project for each of the camp NaNoWriMo's and actual NaNoWriMo. Now at this stage, three drafts is definitely not going to happen. And I'm a little bit worried about achieving two actually, because there were a few things that didn't go to plan. First, I had a two month slump at the beginning of the year where I really struggled to get any writing or plotting or even videos done in that time. So that meant I got off to a slower start to the year than I was originally expecting. Then as we got to April's Camp NaNoWriMo, I decided I wanted to work on a project that I knew would be challenging and I knew was outside of my comfort zone, but I was really excited about it. So I thought, why not give it a go? So I got into Camp NaNoWriMo with a project that was not only harder than anything I've worked on in the past, and that meant the writing process was a lot slower. But I also then got a job opportunity. So my first interview was the 20th of March and I got the final offer on the 19th of April. And that month was basically a loss as far as writing's concerned. I did maybe five writing sessions in that period. It was really not productive. And the reason for that was because it was an incredibly intense interview process. There were three interviews, five assignments, two separate chats with HR, and two separate offers because I declined the first offer. So not only were there a lot of hours required for the interview process, both in terms of interviews and in terms of assignments and research and getting to know the key people at the company and what the company does so you can perform well at the interview, but it also took a lot of mental energy just sort of having this going for so long and having so many emails going back and forth and looking at different residence permit options that I really didn't have the mental space to continue writing as much as I've been writing earlier. And now that that's done, I'm at the point where I'm actually considering stopping work on reciprocal stalking my draft. And there are a couple of reasons for that. One, I've been trying to get back into it and it just hasn't been going well. And I'm starting to think that maybe it's time to stop pushing it. Two, at the beginning of July, I am going to start a new job and I don't know how realistic it is for me to continue putting so much energy into this project when I am going to have something else that's very energy consuming. And three, the longer I spend on this, the more it's going to push back the rest of my goals for the year. So I originally thought when I started in April, oh, I'll do it in two months because that's how long my last draft took. So I thought April, May would be my drafting time. June, I could have a few weeks off and then start preparing for July. And July, I could start revising Powerless. At this rate, if I continue with reciprocal stalking, it's going to be at least another month because I'm expecting it'll be about a 90,000 word draft and I'm still at less than 30,000 words. So it will go at least until the end of June, probably until the end of July, which means I'm not going to be able to fully work on revising Powerless until after that. And then my Powerless revision times could start getting into NaNoWriMo, which was when I was planning on doing the next project. So I'm at this stage where it's like, do I continue pushing to get this draft done, in which case I've done one of the new drafts for this year, but might miss my revision goal and might miss my goal of writing another new draft? Or do I not give up on this draft, but put this draft aside for the time now, acknowledge that I'm probably not going to get two new drafts done this year, but I still have 
time to do my revisions for Palace and I still have time to do another brand new draft at the end of the year. So that's where I am <laughs> at the moment. So one of the things I'd love to hear from you in the comments is how do you decide to give up on a writing goal if you've got a project that you were really passionate and excited about and it stops working? How do you know when you should continue pushing through versus putting it aside or giving up entirely so you can work on something else? The next writing goal was trying out different plotting and planning methods, which I've actually done. So before I started reciprocal stalking, I used the story grid, the snowflake method and the story clock method to map it out. And they are three different methods that I hadn't used before. And assuming that I do write another new draft later this year, I already have a list of different plotting and outlining methods I want to try for that one as well. So that one's already got a big tick next to it and I'm going to get a double tick if I end up doing another new draft. And then my final writing goal was another maybe one and it was revising my Camp Nano draft from last year. Now I can confidently say that is not going to happen. One reason is because, as I've just outlined, I'm already quite far behind in terms of my writing goals. I do have a lot that I want to get done for the end of the year. And this is definitely the lowest priority when I compare it to the other things I had listed, like another new draft and powerless. The other thing is that this draft is a mess. I, I haven't reread it yet, so I can't say that for sure, but I'm like 90% sure it's terrible. And the reason for that is because it was in my head for 10 years. I probably spent far too much time thinking about the book, which meant I really struggled to figure out how to put all of the world building and all of the character development, and all of the backstory into a book in a plot that made sense. So I think there are a lot of scenes that don't need to be there. There are parallel plots that don't really tie up or like work their way together. So I think that's one that's probably going to need to be a complete rewrite and that is not going to happen this year, which I'm okay with. When it comes to non-writing related goals, the first category I had was health and there I had three smallish goals. One was to be able to do and hold a handstand and I have made zero progress on that. Part of it I can blame on coronavirus and gyms being closed for two months. However, the truth is that if I'd really wanted to, I could have been doing like handstand routines and things at home. And for most of the two months when the gyms were closed, my only real exercise was walking. So, you know, that's on me. However, I do still think there's enough time to do that. We've still got six months left until the end of the year. I am going back to the gym now, so I think I can get a handstand in that time. The next thing was only to have to go to the physio once every three months. And the reason that's a goal is because by taking care of my health and my strength, in theory, I shouldn't need to see the physio as much to get things pushed back into place. And so far that has been working, mostly because the physio was also closed for coronavirus. So yes, I'm on track for that, but not through any effort on my part. It's through external circumstances. So I can't really take credit for that. The final health goal was having better energy management. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you've probably heard me say that energy and fatigue has been an issue for me. And some of that might be physical, though no one's ever found anything to explain it. I think the biggest part is that I just push myself too far and I don't give myself the opportunity to rest. And I definitely haven't been <laughs> managing this well this year. And part of it is because there are opportunities that come up that are time sensitive and if you want to pursue them you don't have the opportunity of giving yourself a break it's either give yourself a break and completely miss the opportunity or follow the opportunity and give yourself some time afterwards and that obviously is what happened with the job the other thing is that with the combination of the job and trying to get the book done and just general i won't say I haven't really had personal stress and anxiety around coronavirus, but I think there's been a bit of like stress and anxiety just in the world in general. And I think there's been this vibe that's been a bit draining and just being in a routine and situation that's unusual to what you're used to, that can be draining as well. So pushing forward with the book that's not working and being in this sort of unusual setup in my life has probably contributed to a bit of fatigue as well. And the issue is that I haven't been managing that well. I haven't been taking the time I need to rest because I've been trying to meet the writing goals. So that's something I need to work on more in the next six months of this year. And that is another one of the reasons why I'm considering putting reciprocal stalking to the side because 
I'm worried it's at the point where it's draining my energy rather than fulfilling it and perhaps taking some time to revise Powerless, especially while I'm starting a new job, would be a better choice. The next set of goals I had were hobby goals or things I wanted to try and I have achieved none of these. So on the list was an acrobatics class, a beginner's ballet class, improving my Estonian by doing an A2 course and going traveling for three months. So ballet and acrobatics didn't happen because coronavirus, everything's closed. Estonian has not happened because coronavirus and it's not going to happen because the new role I got is in Switzerland so it doesn't make much sense to learn Estonian anymore given that my husband and I will probably be relocating in three or four months. So rather than Estonian that's getting replaced with French which I do speak though I did a test this morning to test my level and it told me I was A1 which is ridiculous because I did French for six years at high school and one year at uni and I lived there for a year and when I was living there Admittedly, I was teaching English for a living, so I was speaking French every day, but all of my speaking wasn't French. The majority of my speaking was still English because I was working in English. However, when I was living there, I think I would have been about B2 level. So going back down to A1 is essentially beginner and it's quite a drop. However, I think that that's because my grammatical knowledge is really rusty and there are certain, you know, verbs and tenses that you know, I can say them, but when I'm writing them, I don't remember the exact spellings. So I think that affected my score because I'm technically A1 in Estonian as well. And I can, I can hold a conversation in French and I can't hold a conversation in Estonian. So I'm definitely not the same level. But anyway, improving my French because in Tallinn, most people do speak English. So you don't actually need Estonian to live here. I've been told in the French part of Switzerland though, they are quite particular about wanting to speak French. They don't like to speak English. So I should get on top of that. And then the final goal was travel. When I recorded my goals video last year, I was at this stage where I was quite happy with my day job actually. And I thought maybe I could negotiate some extended leave. And then there was also the option of leaving and going back to Australia this year, which was part of the original plan. and. The original plan was I would resign with a few months before we had to go back to Australia and start earning Australian money again and I would have that few months to go traveling. That is not going to happen now because coronavirus but also because I'm starting this new job and it's unrealistic to expect to get three months off when you're starting a new job. So I do still really want to take a long travel break but that's probably not going to happen for a couple of years now which is a shame. But it's for a good reason, like I've got an opportunity to live and work in Switzerland, so I don't really feel like I'm losing anything. And then the final goal is work related. So the last couple of years at work have been quite difficult. There have been a lot of changes in the marketing department. I work with a lot of good proactive people who do good work and want to make changes and the organization we're in doesn't make that easy. There are people in power who just don't agree with best practice and it's a complex organization where it's hard to get things done. So in terms of getting stuff done, it has been quite frustrating. However, in terms of our results, with the limited power we have, our results have been getting better and better each month. So yes, we were continuing to be awesome given the restraints. That's less of a goal now though, because I'm leaving. So instead, I'm obviously looking ahead at this new role. I start the role on July 1st and just want to get off to the best start possible. And I just want to find a way to work in a very intense environment because it's a startup. If everyone goes through the recruitment process I went through, I'm assuming everyone's like very high caliber. So there'll be very high standards. And at the same time, I want to manage my energy. So I have something left for writing so I don't get burnt out. So I want to get off to a good start with the job, but I want to do it in a sustainable way. So when it comes to my goals, there are some things that are not going to happen this year. Mostly they were the maybe goals. The only big one that I really wanted to do this year that's probably not going to happen is finish two new first drafts. And if I stop working on reciprocal stalking now, that's not going to happen. And in fact, even if I keep working on reciprocal stalking now, but it takes another few months, I'm probably not going to have enough time left at the end of the year to start and finish another new draft. So that's disappointing. It has been an unusual year though. And one of the things I'd love to get your thoughts on is where do you sit on the spectrum of there are no excuses for not achieving your goals and you should be able to grit your teeth and put in the work and do everything that needs to happen in order to get it done versus life happens. Sometimes things are unexpected. 
good things and bad things come up that throw your plans to the side and the most important thing is to take care of yourself. Because with this coronavirus situation, I've seen a lot of rhetoric at both ends where some people are saying, you know, if you're not completely shredded by the time you come out of self-isolation, if you haven't learned a language, if you haven't learned an instrument, if you haven't done whatever it is you've said is important to you that you want to do, then clearly it wasn't that important to you because you had a couple of months with more time when you could have done that. Versus at this end where people are going, it is an unusual situation, so you need to cut yourself some slack because we're all doing what we can. Because I think both of these can be helpful. Like this can be helpful in testing how much you really want something and whether you're letting yourself off too easily. Yet this can be helpful in terms of understanding and recognizing that there are times when you can't actually push yourself any further or if you do continue pushing yourself, it's not in your best interest. So please comment below with one, what are your thoughts on unusual situations and whether you should be over here and using them as fuel or an opportunity to push even harder for your goals versus giving yourself a break because unusual things happen. And then two, did you have goals for 2020 and how are you tracking towards achieving them? Are you halfway there, given that we're almost halfway through the year? Or like me, are you nowhere near halfway there, but you think you've still got enough time to get most of them done? So please let me know below. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye.